Well, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. Time to head up to the shop. Two days ago, our high temperature was about 70 degrees here in Beulah. Our low last night was about 25 degrees. And we had our first snow of the season. So it's a little bit cold and crunchy this morning. But nevertheless, the snow is pretty to look at. And it's going to be a gorgeous day today. Should be about 50 degrees, which is a, an improvement over yesterday. Gonna be cold in the shop though. So let's go light a fire and see if we can get something accomplished. Looks like Smitty the shop cat's ready to get to work. Or ready to go back to the house and warm up. Looks like it's just below 40 degrees in here this morning. So it's warmer than it is outside. Perfect day to run the gas for it. Warm the shop up a little bit. We get some shop a lot hotter than the cold. Today we're going to talk about railroad spikes, or more specifically, let's make a little mini railroad spike. Today's project goes back to the blacksmith challenge video I posted a little while ago. So take a moment and go back and look at that if you have it to get a real good idea of what I'm really talking about and why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. Just a real brief review, that means half inch square bar, three inches long. Doesn't have to be mild steel, in this case it's a high carbon steel. But that's the limiting factor to the blacksmith challenge, so that's why we end up with a very small railroad spike when we make a railroad spike. Half by half by three. Three things that new blacksmiths really seem to like. One is coil spring. They want to know what they can make out of it. In this case, I cut some of this off, drew it out square, half by half, obviously, and cut it to three inches long. So this is the material that we're going to use today. The other thing new blacksmiths seem to like are railroad spikes. They really aren't very good steel. This spring steel is much better steel than the railroad spike is. They're ideal for railroad spikes, but they're, they're not ideal for knives and axes, really. But that's the other thing new smiths like, are knives and axes. And that's frequently what they make out of railroad spikes. So we're going to make a railroad spike out of coil spring that has been reforged a square and then later we will make a knife and a small tomahawk out of the mini railroad spikes. So first step we got to make railroad spikes. Now I'm going to be working in the gas forge today to try to heat the shop. Easily done in a coal forge and I'm going to try to remember to shut the gas forge off every time I come to the anvil or talk. There's enough heat left in the forge that it will fire back up very easily. So let's get these hot. We're going to start by just stepping, putting a little step in this at the anvil. We want to leave a bit of a head. So I've got about three quarters of an inch off the anvil and I'm lining my hammer blows up with the edge. So I'm going to create just a little bit of a head there that will be the head of the railroad spike. I'm going to take this down to about three-eighths of an inch. There doesn't need to be a big transition, just enough to establish where the head will be. Try and keep this square, not on the diamond. I got a little off there. The rail spikes are square, not rectangular. 
So you want to keep this even. Now when you get down to the size you want it, go ahead and do a two-sided taper on the end. And we'll need to get that hot again. So we're just looking for a simple little taper. And just clean that up. This doesn't really have to be anything too spectacular. We're going to reforge it into something else. This is just, just a starting point to give it that to look like it was made out of a railroad spike. Even though this was never really a railroad spike and it's never going to get used. So you can see here we have a little bit of a shoulder. It's not an abrupt shoulder, doesn't need to be at this point. So the next thing we need to do is upset this down. Now you could make a little bolster plate. This one's too big. If you're going to do a lot of these to have a heading plate. But for just one or two, I'm going to do that in the post vise. Now the head on a railroad spike is typically up over to one side and tapers a little bit, kind of oval, but I guess more egg-shaped. So that's what we want to do here in the vise. So we're going to put it in the vise at that shoulder we created, and we're going to paint it some this direction and try and all work it one way. It's also at 90 degrees to the little point we just put on there. You want to make sure you get that right or it'll look funny. I'm going to start this by giving it a good upset. And I'm going to go to the pin and kind of draw it out. This will take several heats. Lots of fast blows are what's going to get this done fast, the smoothest. As it gets thinner, let's go to the face of the hammer. And create that nice head. This has cooled down quite a bit, but because I'm not seriously forging it, I'm just trying to clean up that head, we can still do a lot of work at this point. So that's getting there. It's a little uh, more symmetrical than I'd like it to be. I'm going to bring this back to the anvil and see if I can straighten some of this up a little bit. When this doesn't reach over the edge, the hardy hole is a good place to work. Unfortunately, I need to get that flat a little bit. And it doesn't hurt to do a little grinding on this if you need to. So let's go back to the vise. We want to keep that fairly perpendicular in the vise to keep the head straight. We're not going to get much more chance to fix that. That kind of gets the idea. I'm a little disappointed in 
the fact that I got way more back in this area. If I was trying to make it symmetrical, it would have ended up all to one side. Just one of the things that takes a little bit more practice, and I don't make a lot of railroad spikes. But you got the general idea. We'll clean that up a little bit more on the anvil, and then I'll go ahead and do some grinding to really make that look like a railroad spike. So just a last little cleanup here, just to make a little bit less to do at the grinder. And again, you're not going to be staking crack down. We're going to use this as a starting point for another project, so don't get too carried away with it. So there's our basic little railroad spike. I'm going to put that in the vermiculite and let it anneal so it's easier to grind. And then our next video will make something else out of that. Well, I think these little mini projects are a great way to develop hand skills and strongly encourage you to do as much as possible by hand. There's nothing that says you can't use a power hammer if you have one. That's a much faster way and probably more accurate way to create that little shoulder. This hammer is also kind of cold because it was so cold last night it takes a little while to get the oil warmed up so that it runs a little bit smoother. Alright, we've got our two railroad spike looking objects. and I'm just going to clean up the heads a little bit on the grinder to make them look a little bit better. Well that's it for our little railroad spike project and this is just step one creating the railroad spike as part of the blacksmith's challenge from a piece of half by half by three is just one way to, to challenge yourself but now that we've done that in the next video we're going to take these and do something else with them I'll probably keep one just as a sample that you can do that but these other two I think we'll do what every new blacksmith really wants to do, and that is one of these will become a knife, and one of these will become a little tomahawk, just because that's some of the things people really like to do with railroad spikes. So it's just for fun, and it's a skill, good skill builder. Do as much of this as you can by hand at the anvil. A little grinding is not a big deal, but if you can do it without grinding. This one has had no grinding at all. So and this is a fun little project. I think you'll enjoy it. It involves a few skills. There's working from a shoulder on the edge of the anvil. There's drawing the little point. There's upsetting the head and trying to make it do what you want it to do instead of what it wants to do. So there are some good skill builders in this. And then we'll get into actually making some somewhat usable things. The little tomahawk is mostly a novelty. The, a little knife made out of this I think can actually be quite a practical knife around the house for opening mail and boxes and things like that. So it may be a very useful tool. So next time, or maybe the time after that, we'll see, we'll turn one of these into either a knife or a tomahawk, and then we'll do another video for the second one. In the meantime, as always, I'd love it if you'd give a thumbs up to the video, hit that subscribe button down below, share the videos with your friends, if you feel like supporting the channel financially, there is a link in the description. You can leave a donation through PayPal. It's not required. The content is free. And then get out to the shop, light the forge, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you later.
Well, a morning's work doing our railroad spike, spike project and a few other things, and we got it up to 70 degrees in the shop. It's a much nicer day.